Well, guys, it is time for another photography adventure. This time, another film photography adventure. This is the newest toy in the arsenal. <laughs> Mamiya MSX 500. Uh, I picked this up on eBay. Just arrived the other day in the mail this week as I'm recording this early January. Super excited to get this out and try it out. This is, officially came to me as a untested camera, but from a reputable eBay seller, so I decided to take a chance on it. This is a 100% mechanical analog film camera, 35 millimeter film camera. There is a little battery in the bottom here that is only for the exposure meter. We actually had to find some because the battery was dead, and it appears the exposure meter is working. You don't have to use that to use this camera. You can use a separate exposure meter, but or you can just wing it, but... <laughs> Other than that, it's fully analog, fully mechanical. Really cool. The MSX 500 uh, is one of a line. There was also an MSX 1000. The key difference between them is that the top shutter speed on the MSX 500 is 1 500th of a second, where the top shutter speed on the MSX 1000, you guessed it, is 1 1,000th of a second. They also had a mechanical self-timer on the MSX 1000 <laughs> right here on the front. So there was that. Um, really cool. Anyways, this thing's heavy. If you're used to mirrorless cameras, weighs a pound and a half. I think that's without the lens. Uh, but it's got a 1.8, 55-millimeter lens. It should do a nice job. Looking forward to trying it out. I haven't even put film in it yet, so we're going to do that in just a minute. But I've been cleaned it up a little bit. It was pretty clean, but I cleaned it up a little bit. Everything appears to be working, so we're pretty darn sure this is going to work nicely we might be ahead of our last two film experiments which we're not done with it when i haven't quit the fuji film instax mini 40 obviously the best you're ever going to get is like instant film liquidies um but if you haven't seen these videos already we've been struggling with uh the challenges of getting usable prints because this camera has auto exposure only there's no option for things such as adjusting the exposure and it seems to grossly overexpose anything in daylight which is crazy because that's the one time a camera should not have a problem would be in daylight so and even on like cloudy days when you got a nice full giant softbox in the sky we still are overexposed so we're still working on playing with that more of that to come and then of course we are working on the 100 plus year old kodak number uh, number three brownie model b we got as far as trying to put film in it we had some 120 film we'd ordered and only to figure out that the spools aren't right so <laughs> i i have one spool take up spool the, the, the full spool the film came on won't fit it's too small so we need to get that fixed i just love that little tinny click of the shutter we're still working on it. i'm going to make some custom spools for it melanie and i both really want to shoot this thing so we're going to get it done, um, just probably not this month, but we'll come back to that when I have access to some better tools to make some custom spools for tools to make custom spools. All right. So, <laughs> but we got the Mia. Big challenge after I got this. I like to say, true story, though, I literally bought this thing for $5 on eBay. Melanie likes to remind me that it's $5 plus shipping. That's our... Household joke now. $5 plus shipping. <laughs> but I bought it for 5 bucks. So here's, here's the funny thing. Then we had to find film. And I didn't buy, order film online ahead of time because I wasn't sure if things were even going to work because it was coming to me as an untested camera. I was hopeful, but I didn't know. So I didn't want another box of film. I've already got a couple rolls of 120 sitting in storage. I didn't want a bunch of 35 millimeters sitting in storage if this thing didn't work. So it looked like it was going to work. We had to go find film. We did manage to find some Fuji film, the Superior Extra 400. Should be a good all-around film. Looking forward to seeing how it looks. We found it at a drugstore in Parker, Arizona, if you can believe it. I shouldn't tell you that because you all got to go buy up all my film. There's only two more boxes there. <laughs> Here's the funny thing, though. Three rolls of film, 36 exposure, Fuji film, cost more than the camera and the shipping combined. That, that's the fun fact there. So, And we haven't even got it developed yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to put a roll of film and see what we can do. We're going to, it'll probably take us a little bit to shoot 36 exposures, but 
we're heading back to Quartzsite. As I'm recording this, we're heading back to Quartzsite. RTR is starting today. i got to be up there for some work and stuff. We're down near Kofa Wildlife Refuge right now. National Wildlife Refuge, which is a cool spot and is a really fantastic peak here. The Kofa Mountains are near us, and or we're near the Kofa Mountains, I suppose, is the correct way of saying that. And Signal Peak, I believe it's called, is up there. It's a really imposing peak. And so that's going to be the first landscape shot out of the Mamiya 500 here. The MSX 500 is Signal Peak. And then we'll do some others from around the desert here. Well, the rest of them, we'll get developed and we'll share them with you in an upcoming video how they look. But I'm excited to try this out. If you guys had a camera or anything like this, let me know in the comments. Or if you remember these days of analog film cameras. Um, Mamiya, if you're not familiar with the brand, they were really famous for their medium format cameras. It is a Japanese company. Um, Mamiya Camera Company Limited, made in Japan. They're, they don't, you know, this this was from the line of uh, analog high quality Japanese film cameras. So I'm excited to try it out. Um, that's the story with this one. Oh, I forgot to tell you this part though. 1974 is when they started, introduced this line. I don't know if this one was made in 74 or shortly thereafter, but 1974, I was not in kindergarten yet. I'm an old guy now, right? I was not even in kindergarten when this camera was made. Awesome, man. My baby sister was not yet born when this camera was made. She wouldn't even thought of when this camera was made. So I'm excited to take it out and shoot it. Come along. Let's go see if we can do a similar signal peak. And here goes nothing. Okay, so here's the box. What do we got here? Oh, look at this. That's like so exciting. I know, film canisters. When's the last time you saw man, one of I have those? Not had a film. I used to collect these when I was yeah. a kid. They were great for everything. <laughs> anyway, Fuji Film Xperia Extra 400. Good all-around film, I hope, I think. Um, and as I was saying, it, it literally cost us more for this package of three film cartridges than it did for the camera and the shipping to get it all the way out to us from Virginia to Arizona. So kind of funny. So we're going to try and load this thing up anyways. Melanie had to point out to me how to open the film door yesterday when I was playing with it. So battery compartment, but that's only a button battery for the... Um, meter so we're not worried about that the exposure meter this button here if you've been using the thing you have to push this in this releases the ratchet on the sprockets sprocket wheel um, and then of course if you've been shooting film you need to rewind it so you rewind it like so and it should be clicking if you actually had film in there but we're not pulling anything across the sprockets and then you pull lift it up and that releases the film cartridge inside and a little further and it releases the film door. Melanie had to point that bar out. I didn't pull it up far enough. So, And there it is. Anyways, so the film sits right here. And this, we'll take it out in a minute. Comes across here. This is a curtain that opens when I take a picture. This is the sprocket thing I was mentioning. And pushing that button in allows this to free spool backwards to allow the film. You hear it clicking. As the film's coming back across it. You have to use your imagination here. And this is the take-up, which, again, advances as we advance. So you can see all that advances there. When you open the film door, it resets to S, or start. And then as you advance the images, it clicks across to up to 36. So you have an idea what you got for. It only shows like every five, I mean, it's only numbered like every five, and there's just little white marks in between. So kind of like a speedometer in your car, you know, if you're going 57, you have to like kind of guess where you are between 55 and 60 or 55 and 65. But that's it anyways. On the back here, this is the pressure plate for the film that keeps the film pressed flat against the shutter curtain. This is a pressure plate for the film canister to keep it firmly seated in position so that's it it's very simple anyways a little more complicated than the box camera which but it's the same principle in any case the film's going to sit here you see this rod comes down through and it's got a fork on it that's what grabs a hold of the film to pull it back out and we just run the film across and into here and it needs to go through backwards the way you would expect it would I was able to download a manual, a PDF of the original manual from 1974, which I think was helpful. So we're just filming going here. 
Again, some Fujifilm 35 millimeter. Woohoo, this is exciting. It's been a long time. <laughs> it has been a long time. All right, so it looks like we're going in this way, I suppose. I think. I hope. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Fits in there nicely. And so we'll stretch this across. Oops. And we should drop that in so it doesn't pop out on us, huh? Ooh, nerve wracking. Nerve wracking. <laughs> All right, so we'll get that in the little slot there. Hopefully, I do this right. Backwards, I guess, after I put it in there. So, there we go. Now it's taking it up. Get it on the sprockets nicely. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we're good. So now we're going to shut the door and see if we can advance this the rest of the way to get it ready for the first exposure. Whew! I think we did it. Okay, we're sitting on this there. I've already got this set. To, this is how you tell the camera what you got in it. You lift this ring up and it allows you to adjust to tell it what ISO film you have. We have 400. I've already got that set. Um, but I could change that if it was different. That's only for the, doesn't actually change anything except for it's for the exposure meter to know what kind of film you're running. I think it's ready to go. We're gonna take it outside and see, see if it'll take a picture. We don't know if this <laughs> exposure meter is accurate or not. I'll probably do this one and then I'll probably do a couple different exposure settings. I don't really, I don't know if I trust this exposure meter. And when I was playing with it last night against an app I have on my phone that shows access and exposure meter they're wildly different so we're gonna wing this with what the exposure meter says i'm gonna back it off to something that seems like it might be more appropriate and then we'll go from there so.